What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Got a, another DIY build for you. So one of my customers just asked me to make them this garden bucket stand thing. I had no idea what they were talking about, but they sent me a little inspo picture and I got it. And I think this is going to be an awesome alternative to raised beds. I think it's going to be more space efficient and it's going to be a little bit cheaper for you to make. So um, I'm going to show you how to make this using 12 eight foot two by fours, a box or two of deck screws. I'm not sure if I need to use one or two yet. I'll let you know. A drill, an impact driver or drill, and a miter saw. The miter saw could be replaced with a circular saw if you want to. So that's it. Two tools, some screws, two by four, eight footers, and you will need buckets, but they are supplying the buckets. So let's get into it. Full cut list, everything, it's gonna be right here on the screen. So let's get it. Pausing for a second just to go over the first six two by fours that I cut. So out of the first six boards, you're cutting one at 52 and a half. So as you can see, I have six boards. 52 and a half inches was the first cut on each board. Then after that, three boards at 11 and a quarter inches. So you get three out of each one. So on that sixth board, I actually have a good chunk left over. I'm gonna set that to the side. I don't think I'm gonna need it, but maybe I will. But first six, 52 and a half, 11 and a quarter inch pieces. So you should have 15, 11 and a quarter, six, 52 and a half. Let's keep cutting. And after the second batch of cuts, the second six, eight footers, four of them, your first cut is gonna be 51 inches. On two of them, your second cut is going to be 34 inches, and on the third one, you're going to have two 17-inch cuts. So that just leaves you with a little extra. And on that uh, fourth one at 51, you obviously have like a 45-inch section that you're not using. And then the last two boards that have the most waste, you're cutting at 48 and 7.75, so 48 and three quarters. Uh, these are going to be the horizontal supports on the bottom. So. Um, I'm not sure yet. Once I get this thing up, I'll know if it needs more support horizontally. That's what these long cutoffs are for. That's why I bought the material the way I did. But I'll let you know. And um, after this video is done, I'll make a super simple Word document or PDF of the cut list and upload it to my website. So the link will be in the description for that. And that will be free of charge in case you want to see it on paper instead of listening to me ramble. But now that I got all these pieces cut, Let's start putting it together. I'm gonna start by making up the actual bucket holders themselves, right? So out of the first six boards that you cut, you're gonna get three sets of holders. So you can technically manipulate this however you want. If you want two rows, three. If you want them longer, you can do it however you want. So there are five 11 and a quarter inch pieces stretched out along these 52 and a half inch pieces. And there's 11 and a quarter inches spacing in here and that's where the buckets are going to sit in um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and mark on these two by fours where these need to be so I can make sure that they're square in there and I'm going to be using a t25 bit in my impact driver the screws will come with them uh, if you don't have one but I like to use the one that already comes with my DeWalt router because then I get the little magnetic attachment on the end so the screws don't go nowhere I'm not countersinking anything these are deck screws so they already have a countersink tip on them, so they'll go right in. I'm using brown. They come in a variety of colors, and you can use whatever floats your boat. If you want to use stainless steel screws, you can do that as well. Just don't use regular ones if they're going to be outside because they're going to rust, and then they're going to bleed down the wood, and it's not going to look very good. So I'm going to get you up on the workbench a little bit here, and I'm going to assemble these things.
so there you have it. That is the premise. So you're going to do this with the other sets. So you're going to have three of these. The bucket fits in there. The lip is on every side. That's it. This is a standard five gallon bucket. So it's, I believe it's 10 inches diameter on the bottom, 12 and a quarter or 14 and a quarter up top. And they're 14 and a half inches tall. So get the other two put together just like the first one. Now that I have all three of the actual shelves built, I'm going to kind of start working backwards because the only shelf that has four legs on every side is the tallest one and that's the one that was cut at 51. So I'm going to do that first and then I'll be attaching the second shelf because those legs are 34 and then the bottom shelf at 17. Now like I said before, the buckets themselves are 14 and a half inches tall so with the sh first shelf being 17 inches off. That gives two and a half inches underneath for clearance and that will be plenty and then it just kind of goes up and no buckets will be touching each other or anything like that. They're offset anyway, but they won't touch each other, so that'll work. Um, let me figure out the best way to do this. It's probably going to be on the workbench, so I'm going to, uh, actually I'm going to do them upside down. Do it this way, send the legs up, screw them in. That's going to be the easiest. So there is the tallest shelf. I think I'm gonna take this off of my workbench now uh, because this pressure treated stuff is gonna get very, very heavy um, and I'm only gonna be able to fit two layers on the workbench anyway. So I'm gonna bring this down onto the ground back there and finish it up on the ground. So I got the big, the big one over here. Um, I'm going to just put the legs, the 34 inch legs on one of the other shelves and the 17 inch legs on the last shelf. Same thing, I'm gonna do it upside down, flip them over. But on the smaller shelves, you only have two legs and they only go on the front because I'm going to be screwing into these tall legs here along the back. And then horizontal supports will go on last. So I'm just going to go do that and then I will continue the video as I'm assembling it over here. So I got all the legs on. Here's the 34 inch tall piece and there's a 17. So now I'm just going to connect these and all I'm going to do is screw in from the back. I might throw one in from the front too. Um, you can measure up if you want to do it that way, just measure up 34, right? But I'm just going to take a speed square, one of these, I'm just going to put it here and make sure it's square before I start screwing. And once that is done, put the horizontal supports on and this project will be a wrap. So for the horizontal supports, I'm just putting a scrap 2x4 underneath just to raise it up off the ground inch and a half so it's not sitting on the ground. But I'm going to screw into all of the legs to make everything square. Do that on each side and this project will be a wrap. I'm sweating in the shop. It's the first hot day. It's like 80 degrees out and humid. I'm starting to sweat. But there it is. It's done.
so easy. I love projects like this where I don't have to sand. I don't have to paint. I don't have to stain anything. Let me grab a bucket just so you can get a sense of what it looks like at the various heights. Lower. Medium. And up top. That would have been really embarrassing if it slipped through one of those, but um, you know, most buckets have the handles on them. So if you orient all the handles either forward or backward, it should be able to fit another bucket in there. I have another one, so let's see. Look at that. Perfect. Drill some holes in the bottom of the bucket so that they can drain. Fill them with soil. They ain't going nowhere. And if you wanted to get extra crazy, if you were worried about the buckets, you could probably use some uh, the quick setting epoxy, like the five minute epoxy that you can get at your big box store and put it on the lip. But it ain't going anywhere. I can climb on it. So there you have it, folks. Uh, you end up having some one, two, four pieces of cutoffs that are a little over 40 inches long. So you might be able to cut this down if you swap out an eight footer for a 12 footer somewhere, but I just figured it in with all eight footers um, just to kind of keep it easy. And everybody knows eight footers. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do need to take this apart to deliver it because it's way too heavy. I can't, I can't move that thing by myself. And uh, I just thought of something that might be extra cool if you're gonna build one of these yourself. And if it's going to be, you know, you could technically have this in your driveway, right? And in the summer months, when it's super hot and you don't want the sun baking down on your plants, you could put these bottom horizontal supports on the ground and get you some nice casters and put the casters on there. So you can actually wheel it around or if your water source is a little bit further away, I mean, obviously you have to be on a flat surface but you could wheel this on your driveway or if you got it on a back patio or something. So that would be pretty cool. But like I said, I'll make a cut list. I'll make a little uh, either Word document or PDF, and you'll be able to snag that off my website for free. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll try to get a shot over where it's going once I deliver it to end out this video. And uh, if they have buckets with plants in them already, that'll be nice to be able to get that. But um, yeah, that's a wrap on this one. So. 12 8 foot 2 by 4s a miter saw a drill or impact driver um, a square you know a speed square that that helps just making the cuts and two boxes of screws you do need two one pound boxes of two and a half inch screws but very happy with how this turned out you could sell these too you could sell them in your local market so um, I'm not going to tell you what all the cost of materials are because it varies so much right now with the lumber prices so just price out pressure treated two by fours and the screws at your local store and uh, you could use regular pine and you could paint it or you could stain it and seal it but pressure treated you know this isn't going to go bad for a long time so there you have it thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed it if you're not subscribed to the channel already i'd appreciate it if you do so and uh, if this was helpful give me a little thumbs up Thank y'all. I will catch you on the next video. See ya.